I can't sit in one of those armchairs. Um, I find them funny. Um, oh, sorry. I can't sit in an armchair, but something else can. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, um, thank you, Durden, for modelling what's coming. Um, <laughs> This is Rock's hat. It's too big for me. I can't wear it. Um, I, don't know how, I don't know how I came by it. I'm placing it here because I'd like it to go on an adventure uh, with anyone who chooses over the next few days um, to take it and wear it and pass it on to someone else and then pass it on to someone else and I'm trusting by the end of the week it'll return. Um, uh, and if it doesn't, that's okay. Uh, just as Jonathan, I think, was wearing his father's jacket. Is that right, Jonathan? Yes. Um, this is something, what do we do with it? And where does it wear? Um, so that's Rock's hat. And I'd love it to go around and around and around. And if you receive it, don't hold on to it for hours. Put it on, walk it around, and give it to the next head. But tell them it's got to come back on Friday. This is... Who is this? Does anybody know who this is? No, nobody knows who this is. And I'm not sure if I know who it is either. Um, but there was a wonderful woman here in the 70s called Jenny Walker. And um, if any of you have seen a video called the Magnus Magnuson program, which I think you all have, and I'm in that, but uh, that's not about me. Um, Rock talked of Kumos, and Kumos was, uh, actually he didn't talk about it in that video, but anyway, Kumos, he talked of Kumos as a young fawn dancing in front of him in the uh, botanical gardens in, yeah, wherever it was. Here he is, by Jenny Walker. Um, and I don't know how I came across it either, but it's there. So there's a this little impish Mickey person, which sometimes I feel a little bit like. Um, <laughs> and it's really difficult to stand here and talk about Rock because I don't know really who he was. I've had some personal experiences with him, but I'm a, excuse me, I'm a bastard from the bush. I'm an Australian, I'm coming out of a background that is so radically different than Rock's reality, and he mine. Um, I first met him as a half-starved, uh, what, retreating yogi in Sami Ling in 1967 with Peter Caddy. I was there recovering from co cancer, shattered with cobalt, and God had been blasted into infinity through psychedelics in the early 60s. So he is this other cultured person, and I am this person who is in a state of recovery or, no, <laughs> recovery. Um, and I'm working there um, with a couple of lamas who had just started the place. And these two English gentlemen walked in and they were dressed in these tweed coats and whatever they got, vests and ties and polished shoes. Uh, and I looked at them um, and was fascinated by these characters. Uh, <laughs> and later I asked a friend who said, I said, no, I said to him, I said, who were they? And they said, oh, that's Rock, uh, Ogilvy Crombie and Peter Caddy. And I said, well, what are they doing here in a Buddhist center? Uh, and he says, I don't know, but they come from a, um, what was it, a, a Western mystery school in the north of Scotland. And I sort of looked at him puzzled, saying, 
Western Mystery School. What's that? Uh, there's no such thing. There's only a mystery school somewhere up in the Himalayas, which I had to spend a bit of time looking for. And uh, they, he said, oh, well, I've got to go and look at this place. So in 68, I turned up looking for these gentlemen in this place. Uh, and I find a derelict military base. <laughs> um, and a little hollow with a garden in it and a newly built garage, which was converted into a sanctuary. <laughs> so I'm still trying to put all these, um, I'm emotional because I'm still trying to put all these things together to this day. And I walked into this, excuse me, shack. Um, it had plasterboard on the inside and was pretty rough. And I sat down It happened. My heart opened. Before that, I never knew what it was. And it was very big. So I stayed. Um, of course, all the other stories about the founders. And I've stayed until this day. And I'm still trying to discover this and that. Rock was, was a remarkable person. I stayed with him in London. I'm um, not London, in Embra. He was a gentle man. And I walked, worked with him a little bit. He, we used to walk around the park in those days, and Rock was always trying to create a very clear protective radiance around this tiny little community with the intention of allowing it to grow. And it was always getting bigger and bigger. And every now and then, Rock would find some type of creation by many of us who were doing things in the vicinity. And he'd come along and ask me to take it away. So I would be cleaning up all of these wonderful little moments of people's creativity and putting them aside. Another time, we used to go off with Peter on the weekends uh, and the whole community at that point and go and visit different sacred points and we would go over to a mountain called Morven it's on this ley line that runs through here across on the other side of the bay um, and we all Jonathan by the way at that point we used to call him Tigger a much younger man and he'd run up to the top of the mountain and run down again and everybody else was doing this and Jonathan had run up again so, so <laughs> Anyway, every, we're all going up to this sacred power point and Rock goes off over onto another little hill and I'm watching this and that. So I walk over to Rock and I say, why aren't you going up there? And he says, well, it's not up there, it's here. <laughs> um, what would be another story of Rock? Because uh, he was a many colored personality. This little garage, which was a sanctuary, eventually they put his uh, grand piano, I think it was his, wasn't it? Anyway, there was a grand piano in one corner, and in another corner was this brand new console of a sort of um, a record player, and you had to put proper records in it and put them down. Um, and it, the sanctuary was sacred, right? Sacred. But some of us had experienced the 60s, and we liked different kinds of music. And some of us put on some music, and one of them was by Santana. And it was called Black Magic Woman. We were told we shouldn't play music like that in the sanctuary. And then we tried Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon no dark side of the moon in the sanctuary. <laughs> um, oh dear. Uh, what are that little... There, there was a play in these early days with these paradoxes, I mean not paradoxes, but polarities. And I have to say for myself, God doesn't exist, and I hear God a lot. 
and I'm coming into this community where God spoke to me and there's this whole strong sort of ethos and there's another part of me which is going but it doesn't matter what it's called and I think in a way that's what rock taught me it doesn't matter what it's called it's and that's what Peter did it's the spirit in which you engage um, yeah there's so many stories and so many multiple realities coming together in this place that even today for me it's mind-boggling how we have created and I'm looking at all my old buddies out here uh, and I know that we all come from these backgrounds and yet we're still searching or like that beautiful song that was just there um, that's where I come I come to these places uh, I actually think that's enough right now because all I can say is thank you Rock thank you Peter Eileen Dorothy Sheena and everyone and thank you all because this is what we are this is who I am Don't forget, 